I think it's especially relevant uh, the people here at Yale University. It's uh, Professor Marcus, who used to run the U.S. Civil Rights Commission in the U.S. government. He's now a professor in New York, and he's speaking about anti-Semitism on U.S. campuses in the contemporary context. It's at 415 across the hall. So it'll be an important lecture for uh, those in the academic community. So today, and also, uh, before we start, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Regev from the Israeli Consulate. He's in charge of educational and cultural programming at the Consulate, which is here with us today. And um, welcome. He came from New York. Um, and today, it's a real honor and a privilege to be able to introduce to you Dr. Boaz Shapira. Uh, Professor, or Dr. Shapira is going to speak today about the situation in Gaza. Uh, the title of his lecture is Israel Votes. After Gaza, politics as usual with a question mark. He's a senior political correspondent for Israeli television, Channel One. Uh, he's a lecturer at the, school, the Lauder School of Government and Diplomacy and Strategy, as well as the Sami Ofer School of Communications at the Interdisciplinary Center, it's the IDC, which is Israel's foremost uh, private university. It's about to host the Ertzalia Conference, which will be the major political uh, security event in the Israeli academic and political context it starts uh, in about a week. Um, currently, he's the senior political correspondent for the Israeli television, and he's held this post since 2005. He's an expert focusing issues on issues of, of the Israeli politics. He's a He's a fellow, he, he follows political events as a reporter, but also as an academic researcher. Um, he's written a book called Coalitions, and this is a textbook that is used in, uh, in Israeli political science departments uh, throughout the country. And he's, he's written widely on these issues in academic journals and also in the, uh, in the media. So it's really it's a privilege to have you here today. Thank you very much. <coughs> Yesterday, and I feel that I came from east of the United States. I came from Israel. It is very close somehow for me, and and you know, especially because I left. I was there. I left Tuesday night, and Tuesday was the day of the ceremony, big ceremony in Washington D.C. with the Obama coming to the office, and, uh, and I think in Israel they celebrated not less than they celebrated here. I mean, with the programs on programs on the televisions, with the culture, they give more and more uh, uh, special programs about the history of the United States and history of the presidents, and the music was American, and etc., etc. So we are part. So I'm coming from uh, the state of Israel, which is like we are Americans in many, many ways. We, we are. I mean, it's not because we are jealous or it is the, the right equation, the right um, way to live somehow, people think in Israel. And we go, we follow somehow, and we're a little American back there in the Middle East. And um, those of you who came from there understand very well, if they are, uh, agree with what I say. And those who have a chance to visit and uh, visit the area as general, we found out that. And probably, you know, I mean, so I'm here, I'm feeling much at home. I don't see any kind of um, cultural differences, uh, even though there is a lot of uh, what to learn here, what to hear, and uh, what the way to understand some things. Again, um, on a mission, somehow, I, I visit here and there for a couple of days, and, you know, uh, busy back there in Israel with the election, but I left for a couple of days. And the coming election was an election dealing with, somehow, the corruption of the Prime Minister. Mr. Talansky, living not far from here, and gave money to the Prime Minister and years ago. And um, this story uh, pushed, somehow, for the first time, a prime minister to admit that he has to quit his job and he is not anymore a candidate.
candidate, I mean, I want all my. And um, we didn't know we have um, election coming soon in February. We thought that we would continue to be on the limited one in primaries in the Kalima party. That she would be able to be the prime minister, next prime minister of Israel. She failed. But we had a, one issue, which is <coughs> corruption, back here in Israel. And then, as the election somehow began around September, October, <coughs> they say, stupid, this is the economy. Also, we are part of the big world crisis, and we feel it <coughs> as, not, le not as much as you feel it, but we feel it badly. Um, and we feel that we feel it, if I may say so. I mean, um, and the issue for a minute uh, transferred to be economical um, future prospects, what to do with the poor, what to do with the unemployment, etc. And then, as we said, okay, it's not the corruption and moral issues, and it's not the, um, and then it was the economic issues, and then. And one day it began and became the Gaza, the, the relations between Israel, if I may say the relations, and we have to do some kind of relations with the Palestinian people, and the Gaza operation. Some people in Israel call it a war. Uh, it's kind of a big operation. It took place for, as we all follow, for three weeks. And I say it's a kind of um, sad story for the Israelis. I think somehow, and I'm not trying to apologize, we are uh, very strong and we, we decided somehow now to, to go out this operation. But the, the, the feeling after the war, and it was a war or operation, I will use both terms and I don't mean any of these, or each, both of them, it was Something I say said, meaning that we were too strong over the population living in kind of they call this a ghetto. It's the, the population of Gaza, more than one million people stay a million and a half, living in a small place <coughs> surrounding from the Israeli side, the Egyptian side, and the city cannot go out. I mean, we know everything. Every Israeli citizen knows everything. But they have very bad rulers, very bad regime. So what can you do? So we think about the fact that we have to fight there. And I don't say, and I don't want, it's not that I'm coming to regret that I don't care. We do care in Israel. And if I talk to the Israelis, I'm not coming to the African government and I'm not to try to. Uh, I, I'm telling about, and it's not from the academy where they are, as well, maybe on the left side, etc., etc. I'm not coming from the media, maybe they're on the left side, etc. The feeling with the, of the Israelis, the Likud members, the right wing, they say, we have nothing against these people there. We can live with them and we have to find a solution. Now we have uh, two more, um, two more millions, or let's say another one million plus, and figures. Nobody knows exactly the figures how many Palestinians are living in West Bank, in Gaza Strip, um, living in uh, West Bank. Of course, we have problems sometimes with them, and we have more than one million Palestinians. This is the neighborhood to live in Israel, and uh, we see them. We are the city in Tel Aviv city, but as you go, for example, uh, it happened to me to be with somebody in the hospital of Tel Aviv, and the doctor is a Palestinian. And he's living in his village somewhere not far from Tel Aviv, and he's working in Tel Aviv hospital in the center of Israel. Uh, <coughs> and he's not the only one. And more than one. A lot. We, we know them. So, okay. Let's go back to Gaza. <coughs> Say so. We feel pity, but we feel we have no choice. This is the first thing. Second, we feel pity because we need to end. It was very strong. Um, very
very badly. The results are very, very. We, we destroyed Gaza somehow, as we did in Beirut two years ago. We, we, we repeat the system. We are afraid so much to lose life of our soldiers. We like, and this is one of the most important issues on the agenda of Israel. How you can make a war with no casualties on your side? So this is why we are very, very, we, we change somehow. It's not official what I'm saying, but we know. We, we hear the soldier coming from Gaza. Um, we, don't eat, we don't hear it from the, the chief of staff that he doesn't talk, from the minister of defense, Ehud Barak. But the, the, uh, as in the past, you know, we had many stories of Israelis soldiers, heroes, that sacrificed their life for the life of one Palestinian girl somewhere. They didn't let, uh, they didn't shoot over the building because they were afraid there is a family there or something. So they were trying to, to, to do what is necessary. <coughs> I mean, uh, there was a task for them uh, to, to, to do some Finish the military goal there, or whatever, and there is a building, the, the, the Palestinian in the building shooting over the Israeli soldiers. What did you do? What did they do now? They fire over the building. <coughs> this, this is one of the reasons we have more civilians. Now, to fight against guerrilla, it's it's not a war between enemies, uh, armies. It is uh, you, you fight against people living in the town and using the people there to fight against you. In other words, what do we call the three hours of humanitarian ceasefire each day, not each day from the beginning of the war, but after a couple of days, according to the UN request, from one o'clock to four. And we stop any military action, but they still did and fight. Let them do it. I mean, they have the reasons, etc., etc. And, so forth. and then, during these quiet hours, as you feel what is going on, and it's by the Palis not Palestinian, but uh, uh, Al Arabiya television, etc., that they give the pictures of what's going on in Gaza, from the top, uh, probably somewhere. And you see, the fire rockets keep on going between one o'clock and four o'clock. It's live broadcast. I mean, it's not something, and it's. Not Israel to broadcast, and you see the rockets, the, the Qassam missiles, going out of Gaza. On this quiet hours, it's not the Israeli, of course, on the direction to Israel, from where, from the city center. Now, what you should do, give up and say, okay, I'm not going to fire over the same place because there are civilians in this area. What you do? What you? Okay, you let them win the, the war. You let them do what they like because they do it from there or you fire over the same, now between one o'clock to four o'clock we did not, but in different hours we did. So we feel badly because it was, I, I use the term too strong and I ready to accept any other word, it's progressive or whatever. We were more, less than maybe other armies, I'm not familiar so much, I'm not, but uh, you know, figures, only Israel need to tell, how many civilians were killed in Serbia by the NATO operation running by the United States? Clinton, Monica Levinsky, Maria, somewhere we don't remember. So the 78 days of air attacks over Belgrade in the city center. I've been to Belgrade after and I saw what happened there. It was a couple of years after. They left some of the buildings. Uh, some of the ruins, but there were 1,500 people killed on the Serbian side. 1,400 are civilians, and the rest during this war or something. I'm not familiar exactly with the details, but this is the official figures coming from NATO and from Serbia. So, what you do? What can you do? I mean, if you fight people that, that fighting from uh, the city centers. Now, um, this is 
one thing. Second, we are very sad about this operation because uh, we have to pay the price, not as I mentioned before, but the international price. Now we're going to pay it even more. Yes, the war ended on the, from the diplomatic point of view uh, in a very good way. We, we found all the leaders, not all, but six leaders of you, president of France, President of Italy, Prime Minister of Italy, Prime Minister of Spain, Chancellor of Germany, Prime Minister of Czechoslovakia. They all came on the day where the war is over to the Israeli Prime Minister in Jerusalem. I will repeat, in the capital, Jewish capital of Israel in Jerusalem, they don't like so much. They, they talk so much about this problematic Jerusalem and they came, all of them, the six of them, to have dinner together with Prime Minister in the end of this war. <coughs> Do you find any kind, any <coughs> way to tell about the support of the diplomats to the, the states of Europe? Yes, they had a lot of this demonstration during the states, but this is an initiative of mo most Palestinians there. Now that we don't pay attention to that, and we see every and any single uh, demonstrate broadcast on the Israeli television, we are aware of this. But this was the end of the war by the diplomatic. But now we're going to fight more. Because we didn't let, as uh, big armies don't let, reporters to go into Gaza during the three weeks fighting. Now it is over. We are out of there. We may go there. Maybe you didn't see yet because the war was busy with Obama. Uh, America was busy with Obama. America is less maybe discussing like Europe does about what we did in uh, Gaza. And you know, when we bombed the city, so we bombed the city. You know, and maybe you remember the pictures in Beirut. It's more the same. And Gaza, it's a poor state, less. I mean, it's one of the. <laughs> miserable places in all the Middle East and there is nothing to destroy and we destroy what is the nothing there and why we can discuss why and here I'm coming for the third reason that we are very sad about it one, what we did second the, 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 the reaction of the world and the third and what we did nothing it's not over we didn't solve the problem. I mean, we did so much, we pay so much, and the Israeli people feel that in the end of the day, it will continue soon. We know. We're waiting. We're waiting somehow. For and not waiting that it will happen tomorrow. But it doesn't matter if it happens in three months, six months, or one year from now. It unless it's, no, nothing, and there, there is no unless. It will, they will um, come back with their missiles, and uh, it is not over. So, uh, being said, it's not a good way, uh, but this is the truth. Uh, we, are, we, we are sad, but not regret. And we think, uh, and we, I told you about the Israeli, what they think, and the, the examination of Israel will be not the past but the future, and what will be the reaction soon, a few weeks, a few months, a few years from now, less than a few years from now, that we will have to react again in Gaza, and the question what what if we're going to do the same, and probably we will, because we said enough is enough. This was the words simply being used. These words, exactly the words that the old Ormond used in Lebanon, said Lebanon war, said enough is enough. Hey, we went out of Lebanon according to UN resolution. We brought the UN perspectives back to say, where is the border? They said you should be over this line, and we didn't know that. And now, now we are. Uh, okay. Uh, I 
and, and we did what it should be done, and uh, suddenly they keep on fighting with us. For what? Ah, they want Wi-Fi signal from the left. Okay. <coughs> this we know. You know, we say in Israel, never trust an hour. You know, the, don't trust them. On the other hand, you can say, they say they want to wipe out. Believe them. So to believe them or not to believe them, never trust an hour. So, uh, so we react very badly there in Lebanon with 33 days of war. We with the American aircraft and the immunity coming from here probably, et cetera, et cetera, also some uh, Israeli production. And, and um, in the end, after a few weeks, Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, said, I uh, regret if I knew in advance that this would be the results, I'm probably not going to be um, kidnapped. Because I paid too much. He said, he said, I have to say, he's um, sometimes very generous. This uh, Nasrallah is, sometimes I feel it's like the Israeli politics. It's like, he, he, we, we see him so often, our, 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 whatever he talks, we see what he says. We follow. So, um, <coughs> and what happened in this war now in Gaza? Uh, after a week, <coughs> the UN announced that he found. Katyusha rockets ready for um, uh, they plan some <coughs> probably Palestinian rockets to fire rockets toward Israel and the UN found it and announced it and the Hezbollah announced it as soon as possible we didn't do it it's not ours and after a week the same Probably Palestinians, there are a lot of Palestinians in Lebanon, of course, you know, refugees. So they, they fire f three or four Katyusha rockets over at a Shlomi Nahariya. There was some damage there. And, and again, Hezbollah declared, declared by the television, etc. They are not regretting whatever, but it's not Hezbollah. They are afraid. Okay, this was the, we achieved somehow our goal. Look, Nasrallah came in the beginning of this operation in Gaza and said, I'm looking for the support of all the Arab nation uh, to be on the side of the Palestinians. How do you support? We don't support. We, d we have the power to act, and I'm looking for the states to. And <coughs> what he did went down back, back to his shoulder <coughs> and stayed there and didn't talk anymore. So. And I give you um, another example. We didn't hear any kind of a problem coming from all West Bank <coughs> during the war. There were few actions of some Palestinians to, to demonstrate or to throw stones. It was quiet. Why? They are afraid. What's the purpose of the <coughs> operation in Gaza? It's to frighten the people who live in there. Hey, please, you are firing rockets over Israel for the last eight years. So we ask you, we beg you, please stop. We are talking very clearly, and we did some small operation to let you understand, we ask you to stop. Hey, what's, what's the problem? <coughs> you want to talk with us? We are ready to talk with anybody. We are talking with the Palestinian authorities. Hey, you want to talk about what? That we go out of West Bank and Gaza? We can go out of Gaza. All of Gaza. So what do you want? So the Hamas, they declare. We don't want the Israeli state to be exist. We want the Palestinian state. Okay, in this case, there is nothing to talk about. Still, there is what to talk about. But this is what they say. So, gentlemen, if you want to fire over rockets, or rockets over Israel, we would like to have it, so please stop. So, if we were, were so, we did the wrong thing lately in these three weeks, so, and the world can condemn Israel for that, maybe, where was the world to support Israel for eight years to be quiet? <coughs> we did the right thing for eight years, we were shut up, 
okay, there were a few operations, but rarely. And yes, it's not a few, many more. But it was in purpose to, to stop it. And we said clearly, if they don't fire rockets, we are not content to do anything. Now we open all the we tried to we open we wanted to open the airport here and the the port, the seaport, etc. All that point of that one to to support the rebuilding of the, the seaport of Gaza. And Turkey want to give money to uh, some industrial areas in the territory of Israel to let Palestinian try and come every day to work with the support of Israel. It's more secure to of Israel for the Palestinian, not for any Israeli. But the Hamas didn't let them get there. They were firing over the Palestinian trying to, to cross the border. So what you can do, you block the way. I mean, you, you don't say, OK, let. So we did all of what we did because we had no choice. And uh, in the end, we went to this war. And the results that we did get nothing because we didn't change, of course, the regime. We didn't plan to do so, not in three weeks. I don't know if it's possible. And uh, changing a regime, it's, it's not a solution for, for a problem. You have to, to face. And um, actually, uh, we've been talking about Gaza, and we have a lot more to talk, but this became, this became the number one issue in the Israeli election. In the beginning of this war, it gave some popularity to the government that act <coughs> should, and you know, the Israeli uh, people support each and every government in the first days of any kind of war, of course, this kind of war, and this was a very short war, so we didn't find any um, other activities upcoming soon after. And um, we found that the uh, Kadima uh, getting a little bit more support somehow, especially the Labour Party, leading by the Defence Minister Ehud Barak. But it is not much that can reflect and change the outcome of the results of the election. As we see now, that there are uh, two blocks, and there is the right and the left in Israel. The left is not exactly left. Now I'm moving from Gaza to talking a little bit about the Israeli election. There are two blocks in the Israeli uh, political life. We have the left and the right. The left is not left. The left is not right. We have right and not right. Some of the left are in the left side. Uh, but some of the people on the right side are ready to, to make the big compromises with the Palestinians. Let me remind you. The uh, Camp David uh, agreement back in the 70s was created, uh, was uh, anything, was made by Menachem Begin, the, 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 the leader of the Likud, that, you know, he planned it. And lately, a few years ago, the Likud operated, they decided about the disengagement to go down from Gaza. It was, again, the, so this is the right. Of course, some people really couldn't like it, etc., etc. I know, but the right is looking to some progress in the Middle East crisis, big crisis, big conflict. At the same time, the, <coughs> those on the left side know uh, to to uh, to fight. It's not that they are left and they are giving up and surrender. And uh, we see it lately with the war. Kadima had to prove that. This party can can fight against this again against the Arabs and and uh, and Zip Livni is like somehow kind of minister of defense. She's uh, with the foreign affairs uh, ministry. But now I want you maybe to understand the political life in Israel, um, and this will be uh, regarding the, the political uh, outcome of Gaza somehow. But uh, to understand what is Israel politics and. Uh, we don't have, it's not a teaching uh, sometimes. I mean, as courses are running in the university for all the semester, all the year. And I'm trying, and it's not, what I'm going to say now is not part of the election necessarily. It's the reality, and it's uh, more than as I'm a reporter of the uh, political life in Israel. But 
um, uh, it is the outcome to understand in three minutes the Israel and politics. <coughs> we are very conservative, if I may say, each one with its thought. We don't change much. We are people who are devoted somehow, somehow, as we say, with our preference. And we keep on voting the same. Somehow, like the Republican, the Democrats, again and again, families, etc. You are belong to the right. You vote to the right. One of the reasons because there is not a big difference. So it's traditional voting. Yeah, there is not a big difference between Barack, which is left, let's say, and Netanyahu. There are they say they are they say they are twins, <coughs> some people say so. Okay. But we have, for example, a lot of big immigration coming from Russia. They don't have any tradition. How did they vote in the Israel election during the eighties? They were not in Israel. They didn't know nothing. And they came in and they learn. And they more probably can change the vote, etc. But it's not only there. Still, there are some people who hesitate and located in the center of the political life is a political, um, let's say, arena. Now, now a little bit of history, one minute only. Uh, till 77, when Begin won for the first time with the Likud party the election, we knew the results before the election. Mapai, Avoda, Marach will win the election. It was again and again and again. There was a big surprise in the year 77 where when uh, Begin became Prime Minister of Israel. And this is a big change, not because for the first time he did it, and because he changed then, and it was changed since then, that we have actually two blocks. You know, we are more like America, two parties, Democrats and Republicans. Somehow looks alike, people can be here or there, support here or there, we have the traditional voting, and we have some years for this party and some years for the other, and the reason is who is the, the one to stand, uh, uh, to lead the party, it's charismatic uh, more than the other. <coughs> now what happened in Israel that we thought the king would lose the coming election in 81, but he won 61 mandates in the Knesset. And then there was, the 60-60 vote of 84 and the unity government. See, we established by that by these years the, the 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 fact that we have two blocks with with the same support. At the year 88, now since then and I may say we have a little bit more, as you see, 77, 81, and then 88. A little bit more support to the right, basically. It is 60 something, 50 something. But it's not necessarily you get it all the time. Then in 88, you get more support to the right. Shamir became the prime minister for four years. Ah, with Paris, without Paris. And then in 91, for the first time since 77, the Labour could win the election because they had, with the merits party yeah. and the Arabs, 61. So Rabin became prime minister. He had 61. Again, it's equal. And 61, he can do what he likes. He did the Oslo agreement. He had the support in the Knesset. He lost some of his members, the, the, the third way, etc. He had many problems. And you know how was it ended. I mean, uh, but this is another thing. Let's go to 96. Netanyahu won hardly in the battle against Spirit. Of course, in the parliament, he get a little bit more. In 99, he lost to Barat. If I'm going to the parliament, I see that the results in the parliament was 60-60, but it was direct vote for prime minister, so Barat was the prime minister. And here we come to our time. Uh, Sharon won on the year 2003, and he got majority that clearly more than over 60 votes. And then, when for the first time, the creation of Kadima for the uh, election of 9, uh, 2016. What happened there? For the first <coughs> time ever, as we found that
the labor is a little bit collapsed because people say it's the old party. The old party was one year old, 100 years old, and, and, uh, and there was Shinoi to come, etc. Kadima came as a party that Sharon created, and I'm talking about a few weeks before he became sick and went out of politics, etc. Uh, that he created a party that established by Likud members, it's mainly Likud. There were only three people from the Labour Party to come. But he got all the support of those from the left and those who are running and hesitating between right and left. So what is happening now? In the election of a, um, uh, three years ago, Sharon got majority actually for the left because he was, of course, the leader of behalf of Kadima, but is everything okay? Yeah, I, I want to finish in two minutes. Two minutes, yeah, 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 yeah it's the I said from Gaza to election, and I'm coming to this election. So, <laughs> the year, no, it, it's with Kadima that I'm gonna uh, want to. to, to to let you understand something, and this will lead you to understand what's going on in this election. You count from now, I think, seven sentences, but long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is like that. Sharon got the majority because Kadima plus Labour plus Arabs plus Arabs, Kadima, that there are people from the Likud, became 70 members altogether in the parliament. In this coming election, there is no Sharon anymore. Kadima is weak. Kadima is getting support from, she, she takes support from the elder party, she takes some <coughs> from the Labour Party. Kadima, that is 29 in the government, actually getting 30 something, 37. But on the same time, Kadima losing all the mandates that came from the Likud that Sharon could bring, they're going back to Netanyahu. You don't see much different in the right wing. Netanyahu is taking two mandates from Shas party and he's taking one mandate and then he's losing to Lieberman, etc. It's all the same. But he's getting back something like, we count, 14 mandates, moving from the left to the right. If the left was 70, now they're going to be 55, 56. If they prevent the 14 mandates to move from one side to another, and it, if it will be only 10, and the war maybe was intended to do so, so you have again the same, the equal results. Or if the left would get 61, so it's uh, another three, four years of the left side. But now, by the polls, what we can see, the right has 63, 64, and I don't count what, how many people have. And all together means uh, that the people that went with Iran is coming back to the good. And we have again the traditional vote, the famous one, that you have the right wing to have the 63 mandates. Like we did in many, many occasions in ADA and many in, during the years, 96, 99, etc. Et so this is the outcome probably of the election, two weeks and some days from now. And uh, in the Likud, they are afraid of a surprise that they will lose in the last few days, three, four mandates, the, 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 the right block. And in this case, it's another politics. But if they win, this will be the so we have about 20 minutes, I think, for questions and answers. Please. Um, so I'm going to start off uh, with a question. So first of all, I have a question for the for you. Uh, the people here, how many people has, have read the Hamas Charter? Mm. Okay. So it's it's a uh, it's good. Usually when I give lectures, I ask the question, it's usually one or two percent. So you're about fifty percent. That's good. So, so, so of course, with Hamas, uh, the Institute that studies issues of anti-Semitism, so you know Hamas is obviously trying to side all this anti-Semitism and culture and destruction, not only in the state of Israel, but for the murdering of Jews in its founding document. It's sexist, homophobic, uh, etc. It doesn't leave your mind. So it's a, from our perspective, it's extraordinarily problematic. So, you, so my question would be, therefore, given the, 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 the <coughs> worldview of Hamas and their agenda, you said that the war was successful. So 
question to you is a lot of damage was done to Gaza, and yet Hamas remains, it seems, firmly in power. So even though the six uh, representatives of the Europeans came for dinner, they also, they also, I think the same day or the day after, said that if Hamas was part of a coalition government, um, they would welcome it into the Palestinian government. They would like Hamas to be part of a Palestinian coalition government. So I'm not sure if that's successful or not. So that's, that's my first question. Was the war actually successful? The second question is, and I think this connects to both Israel and the United States, the, wa the wider picture is that under the Bush administration, Iran has become much more powerful than it was uh, for a series of reasons that we don't want to get into, but the end result in the last eight years with the Iraq war and the administration is that Iran has become very powerful and they're exporting their revolution through Hamas and Hezbollah. So what do you think should be the Israeli and the American reaction to this uh, threat? And can, can you address the situation in Gaza without looking at the problem? Yeah, it's big and the main question, you know, for the prospect of the, of the Middle East. Look, Hamas says he wants the war. Like, you know, somehow I want Hamas to believe so. And uh, as heroes who want the war against Israel, they will come to make peace with it. Okay? Because you don't want to come from a position that you want to war. Go ahead. If you're that strong and you didn't lose the war against the, the strongest army in the region. So come, come over. I'm not, I'm not afraid that Europe uh, would like to declare that she recognized. I'm not afraid of that. I'm looking for the reason for them to do so. If they change their policy, I feel very bad about it, and it's going to be a mistake. It will not help the, the, the solution in the Middle East. <coughs> Look. We will do peace with Hamas one day, of course, with this benefit. If they will say they change from their views, they will say. This is the whole thing. We know the way to achieve peace in the Middle East. It's not, how do you make peace in the Middle East? How do you bring this conflict to its end? Very simple. We're ready to go out of most of West Bank. It's declared by the Likud government with Netanyahu as a minister. We are ready to go and to leave some, you know, settlement here and there, etc. Okay, let's deal it once again. We are not ready to give any inch of Israel, of course. We are not ready for refugees. It's not, okay, maybe 50,000, etc. Et there is the way to solve the problem. <coughs> But there is somebody that is ready to do it on the other side. This is in er everything is ready, but there is nobody from the other side to accept it. And we don't bring them to the corner. I mean, it's a decent solution. I mean, according to the year 47, somehow I know what we gain and what we lose. We thought Arafat can do it. We, I think Arafat didn't do, but it's history. Now we have the problem. Abu Mazen is ready, but he's weak. And then we have Mr. <laughs> Akramania, the leader of Hamas. Mr. Akramania, maybe it's, maybe, it, maybe somehow, we don't see so, but look, we need a strong leader coming from the Palestinian side to lead their, his, his own people and to keep them quiet. As you see, Gaza is quiet now because he is strong. And if he will one morning say, I'm ready to do peace with Israel, not peace, an agreement. I recognize the right of Israel to exist. And he will not gonna like us at all, but he will make some kind of an agreement and can keep it. This is don't look for a solution. Solution it's a word that you never get. Try to get an arrangement. It lasts look, you're asking about Tsipilini and Netanyahu. What's the difference between them? I really don't they're both from the Likud. I, I know, I know. I can if you ask me to find, I will find. And if you ask me not to find, I will not find. Okay. I don't care who will be the next prime minister of Israel, as from the Israel as, um, um, and gods and uh, anything. When I wake up in the morning, I want to know if Hussein Barak in Egypt is still in power. Yes. I need this strong leader in Egypt 
to control over his people. You have more extreme in Egypt than in Gaza. <coughs> and they are very, if Mubarak is passing away, going out, I don't know, I am very afraid what will be on the border of Egypt. I have to, it's more important who will be the president of Egypt than who will be the prime minister of Israel. And thank you to, to Mubarak, thank to Hafez Assad, the father, and Bashar, the son. They're very nice, really. I don't want them to like me. I don't need them, I don't need peace with them. They're quiet. Okay. They let me live, I let them live, etc. I have to be careful. I have the, 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 the Jordanian family, but this is another story that I don't want to be friends about. I don't need Mubarak to be a friend of mine, and I love his policy that he is treated Israel badly. Very good. Because if, if you will be a friend of Israel, you will lose power. You, you saw what happened to Saddam. I mean, you then, he should be very aggressive with Israel. No, he doesn't come to visit Israel. Nothing. Okay, I understand. But he still has the connection with the United States. I'm looking for Akramania one day to be Mubarak, to control his people, to hate Israel, not to want to talk to us, but, but to keep his people quiet. And to accept the borders, etc., we give him more. And this will be the outcome of the conflict for one generation, you know, but it's called the Can you comment on the Iranian connection? The Iranian connection, it's a... Um, Israel repeats and say all the time it's not an Israel problem, it's the war problem, and I want to do nothing, and the war is late, and I'm sorry, we have to think over Iran as a uh, nuclear superpower, it's over. I mean, I, and only if Obama can make America, he can change it. Maybe he will join uh, the engineer there, engineers there, and we are part of it, and then he will control it. I don't know what solution you can make to solve this problem, but to prevent, well, it's too late. I mean, they want it, and we have to face a new reality in the Middle East. It's very sad, very bad, but uh, it, it, if you want to prevent it, you have to do something to, 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 to you know, Ahmadinejad came to New York and said, here in New York, we have to wipe out Israel. As you said, like the Hamas. And the world said, ah, he's crazy. Hey, just a minute. You cannot be part of the UN, for example. I mean, nobody says so. And if Israel running after uh, the few Palestinians, one million, etc., and I know it's very uh, problematic, say Israel cannot be part of the uh, UN, etc., you know, some declaration coming from Europe, etc. So what I'm trying to say, Iran, maybe something can be done, but it's up to the United States on this side. I hardly see Israel is acting alone. I mean, even in Syria, which it was a, a small nuclear uh, initiative there, we did it with the permission, with the supervision, etc., of the United States, and then we didn't say nothing about it, and in the United States, they declared we did it. We're not going to do anything. <coughs> no, no, because any action we do cause the life of many thousands of Americans, and we know it, and, and not for this reason. I mean. I don't see Israel acting by itself, and uh, I don't see that we can stop. This is the floor, please. This is, yeah. Okay. I, I think it's, it's very good to hear, and very important for us to hear, your practical side. I mean, you sound very practical in response to these questions, not on some more abstract or theoretical or at level related to some documents, but how do we get a job done that we need to get done for our own well-being? And I want to in that same spirit, asked you about your analysis of Gaza, where you kept saying, what choice did we have? We had no choice. We, enough was enough. And um, my question is, that comes from a perspective as a physician. So let me just give you an analogy. Okay. Somebody comes to a physician and says, they have a problem with my hip. Enough is enough, doc. I kept having this pain in my hip. I got to get my hip out. I got to get one of those new hips. Now, if you go to a hip specialist, they'll probably give you a new hip. You might go to another doctor who looks at your legs and, and takes a makes a broader definition of the problem and says, I'm not going to intervene over here in your hip. I can see that your feet are a little bit uneven. If I just put a little thing in your shoe, you're going to walk different, and your hip is going to feel better. 
So I'm a little worried by your analysis of what you gave to us, at least, in this brief conversation about what to do about the rocket fire from Gaza seemed a little too narrowly focused on just the rocket fire from Gaza, just the pain in the hip, rather than wondering if it's a broader issue where one might have intervened at a different point entirely in the system, like intervening in the foot to affect to, to help the hip. And I'm a little worried that Israel re uses responses to old questions and old problems and situations in new situations. And the response may have worked in the past, but really isn't the practical response to the new situation. And too much like the hip doctor who just wants to take out the hip. Well, uh, you know, if uh, the, the, what we are now with Gaza is uh, not trying to solve the Palestinian problem. And maybe it was in the eve of election. And the purpose of that is to show that the coalition, out coalition, and maybe remain coalition, of Kadim and Labour can do a war and stop the Mexicans for eight years. We are asking them. So this was the purpose, and we maybe obtain it, at least for the coming weeks. You know, there is somebody that uh, is hurting your hip, uh, is touching your hip. Somebody is coming and give you, um, I don't know, Touch it all the time, say, please don't do it. They come again and they hit your hip. It's just like that problem. So no, nothing. You said, nothing. Good. Another one. So you say, please, I want you to not to do it anymore. And he does it once again. You're not going to solve the relations with gentlemen, but one day when he comes and does it, you hit him badly that he said, oh, la la, I'm not do it again because he's crazy. We want it to be in this world the crazy part of it, the crazy part of it. The crazy neighbor. We want to be crazy. We decided that for the meanwhile, even we don't like to be, we are going to be the crazy one. Ah, we are so no, I know you decided that. We, we <laughs> love so much to that. hear from Hezbollah, but we said, just a minute, we are ready to talk to you. You recognize our right to exist here? Yes or no? If somebody says no, I'm not. I shouldn't talk to you. This one little thing you should change. Our family. What happened to our father? We suggest a mistake. We become the leader of the, 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 the Palestinian entity. And so, what is that? I mean, this was the, a small dialogue to let him understand that we are, if we say enough is enough, so we mean enough, enough, it's not the solution. And we feel badly what, what's going on in Gaza. We want to have, we want <coughs> to go there, we want to do something to say, hey, what about Gaza? What? I know they want the solution for the crime. All the conflict. I know, I know. And I really appreciate what they do for that. They don't give up, maybe as others. But they should understand that we are ready to talk. We, we are talking. And there is what to talk. There is other means of pressure. If they prefer it, we know to react. Okay, so we have like 10 minutes left. So we can take a few yes. quick, quick I will give you quick answers. Okay. okay. So first, I mean, okay. Um, has the window of opportunity for a two state solution, has it? Closed? No, it's not closing. No, no. It hasn't. It, it seems that many of the Palestinians will have to realize that they can work Israel to a situation where there can't be a two state solution rather than go for a binational state. And if there's a binational state, it would be a very clever strategy to put an end to Israel altogether because then, then there would be heavy pressure from the international media and community to pressure Israel a la South Africa. One person, one vote, and this would be a, a tremendously uh, difficult for Israel to uh, work against. You know where's the answer? I don't know. Here in this room. Why do I mean so? Very sharp and clear. Uh, for now, we don't need you, but your support. As soon, next generation, we need your vote. And you will vote in the Israeli parliament, and we will need no more uh, majorities for these things. Because what the Jewish and the Muslim folk in the Parliament, for example, they would solve this problem. The fact that there would be two millions and we would be twelve millions would be the solution. Probably, <coughs> made, it's not been discussed yet, etc. Look, the minority in Israel is a bad minority. <laughs> the existence of the Jewish <coughs> But then uh, we, we need 
to be a democratic state. And we need everybody that has an Israeli passport. And there are a lot of Israelis. How many people that have here an Israeli passport, for example? Yeah. And you don't come to vote in Israel necessarily. In the but if you let you vote here, you may, you may go to vote. You don't vote for Hamas or, you know, representative the Gaza. You vote for Meretz or you vote for Likud. You vote, okay. There is solutions for the equation in Israel somehow. Um, for the democratic atmosphere. But we have a problem. We have a problem. We are not going to be America that we are all united and everything. We are not going to get married. I mean, for, as, to be precise, we cannot get married Palestinians. Yeah, Muslims are Jews. So the problem will remain forever. And um, at least I will leave some problems for the next generation. I cannot solve everything. Uh, okay, so very quickly, Clemens. Uh, quick, yes, please. Mr. Barak, uh, a few days, maybe 10 days ago, he told us this would be a long operation. After seven days, it was ended. And I, I know a lot of people uh, in Europe, especially, but also in the US, who are really astonished at uh, good military action. Uh, you mentioned these prime ministers from Europe. They, not all of them have been uh, in favor of it, but they have also not been very aggressive against Israel. They were quiet. Uh, and they just stopped it. It's a. Uh, for me, it's unbelievable. Just stopping an action which is going very good. And no, but we, 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 we achieved our goals. Yeah. We achieved our what? goals Tunnels as declared the in the beginning of the war. No, we didn't say we want Hamas out. We didn't say Tunnels so. is Tunnels. still there. Tunnels, Tunnels is, still is still there, but we have now a promise coming from Condoleezza Rice. You remember her? She used to work for America. Who is she? Who is she? And we have a, a, a promise from Mubarak, and also, and also, I tell you one more thing: we are still in town, we are still in the area, we will keep, and we know we don't want. Look, the the purpose, as we were talking before, of this action was for one thing: hey, we are crazy. Listen, we are crazy. We are not enough. Okay. And the 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 the. the um, the exam in Israel, if you're crazy or not, will go the next uh, crisis coming soon. If we will repeat what we do, they will not do it anymore. They will stop. They will think twice. Why Nasrallah didn't show up at yourself and run to say, I did not, I did not. He said so. Why? For the one reason. The friend of Israel. We learned that you have to be strong, and but we were afraid of ourselves. We didn't want this long war as we went into Lebanon. We stayed there. We learned just a minute. Five days operation is good for us. As we stay, we lose. They, they kill our soldiers, we don't like the war. You go, Barak didn't say long operation, but he meant for years or something. He, he has an election, he wants all soldiers to be back. And he knows that he cannot. So, and it, they planned it very well. Air strike for one week, infantry for another week and so, going out. This is it, you learn. And they declare clearly, we don't want Gil, we want so much, badly. But we are not looking for the return of Gilad Shalit, the Israeli soldier. Yeah. We are not looking for a, a collapse of the Hamas regime. This is the goal. We achieved this goal, and we are ready there in the neighborhood to uh, act uh, once again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, a very quick question about the three minutes left in the room. Quick question about internal politics in Israel. And I would like to ask about the electability of city leaders. Um, in the light of uh, this military operation in Gaza. Um, one thing we can't ignore, and I would like to bring into the conversation questions of gender. Um, because there is a military discourse in Israel, um, which is very strong, um, to what extent do you feel that this recent military action affect her eligibility, affect um, the way in which she could uh, get elected. Um, again, it's not direct elections, but still, when people are voting for Kadima versus Avoda or Likud, um, they do vote for a leader. Um, so Tzipi Lidni versus Barak, who already failed, versus Netanyahu, who already failed more than you know once. Um, how would you analyze this? The Israeli uh, people are ready to accept Tzipi Lidni as a prime minister. Yes, they are. But she should be in another party. Not for the reason she is in the wrong ideological party. 
Kadima is not going to win the election, probably, probably. And if Mufaz would be there, they would lose more. And if Ormond would be there, they would lose even more. And it's not a woman or a man. And if Sharon suddenly is coming back, maybe they will win the election. Okay? If Livni is becoming the leader of the Likud, for example, she may win the election. We are not afraid. Well, we can talk. She's not. Um, you know, only two years in the Mossad, you know, about two years in the Mossad, but, but you know, uh, she's clearly capable, she's a fit for yes, a exactly. leader. I'm just asking yes, about but the atmosphere in Israel. Who is the soldier oh. number one of Israel? It's been mentioned like that, a wood barack. So we don't run into the Israeli politics. There is, a, you know, there is um, um, a fight or uh, competition between BB and anti BB. All the others are anti bibi Now there is a competition who will be the number one anti bibi Barak or Tzipi Livni? And they fail in the... In Barak which should be more aggressive to take this position from Tzipi Livni, but he gave up somehow, and he did mistake politically. I mean, there is a politics, and he let Tzipi Livni to be the leader, and the one to say she's gonna be probably the one that can replace Netanyahu. And, uh, and he doesn't support her. If all the left would be and the left is not there, not left again, etc. We be united, we might get a, another result, and it doesn't, doesn't matter. People can vote for Tzipi Livian, and she knows to take a good minister of defense, and it's not that... So she does get credit for it. I think I, she does some credit, but it's not the credit that she wanted to change the results of the election. Yes, I'm sorry. Just a quick comment before I thank you. Please bring your place and put it in the garbage cans because another group is coming in momentarily and will be big help. And again, important meeting in Kenneth Martin to be across the road of anti-Semitism. Persuade me.